Hello, and welcome to the lesson on inverse proportion. In this lesson, we'll first try and understand what are inverse proportion, okay? When two quantities are related by inverse proportion, what does it really mean? We'll then understand the method of reciprocal to find the unknown value in case quantities are related by inverse proportion. And finally, we'll understand this method of products to find the unknown value when quantities are related by inverse proportion. Let's begin then. Let's look at this particular situation. If one person can paint a house in six days, in how many days will two people paint the same house? Now this looks familiar to you, right? We have done direct proportion. So let's look at the ratio of people to days. So one person, six days. The question is two people, how many days, right? Let's use the method of scale factor to get the unknown value. So the numerator has been multiplied by two, one times two is two. So the denominator has to be multiplied by two, six times two is 12. So the answer is 12 days. Hey, something looks astray, right? How can it be 12 days? If one person can paint this wall in six days, how can two people paint it in 12 days? And if two people take more time, then I might as well hire one person. Why would I hire two people to paint the house in double the days? Well, not all quantities are then in direct proportion. There are some quantities like these which are not in direct proportion because if I increase the number of people, the time taken would be less. So our answer is clearly incorrect. Well, let's take one more situation. Okay, this is the same situation that we saw in direct proportion. We have two cars, one traveling at 10 miles per hour, the second at 20 miles per hour. And if you look at the time taken to cover the same distance, okay? The distance covered by the faster car in one hour, the slower car covers it in two hours. It takes more time. The distance covered by the faster car in two hours, the slower car takes four hours, again, more time, right? Distance covered by the faster car in three hours, the slower car covers in six hours and that in four hours, the faster car covers in four hours, the slower car covers in eight hours. What that means is, as the speed increases, the time taken to cover the distance decreases or vice versa, if the speed decreases, the time taken to cover the same distance would increase. That's why in this case, speed and time are said to be in inverse proportion. Remember, it's not direct proportion. In direct proportion, if one increases, the other one also increases. This is inverse proportion because if one quantity increases, the other one decreases. So what really is inverse proportion? Two quantities are said to be in inverse proportion if one is multiplied or divided by a number, the other is multiplied or divided by its reciprocal. Well, let's understand this table. The values in this table are all in inverse proportion. Now, how do we know? So now let's take four of these values from the table, which are from the first two rows, right? Two, 16, four, and eight. Now, what happens to X? As I go from two to four, X gets multiplied by two. But if you look at Y, Y gets multiplied by half. From 16 to eight, I need to multiply by half. Only then I'll get to eight. So if X gets multiplied by two, Y gets multiplied by half. And that's exactly what is said there. Two quantities are in inverse proportion. If one number is multiplied by a number, the other one is multiplied by its reciprocal. Reciprocal of two is one over two, right? And that's exactly what has happened, right? So these two quantities are then said to be in inverse proportion. Let's go back to the example, right? We have established the fact that if the number of people increases, the time taken to paint the house would decrease. That's common sense, right? And hence, these two quantities, people, and the days taken to complete a work 
are in inverse proportion, right? So how do we go about doing this then? So people today is still one over six. What happens if the ratio of the numerator is two? Now, what happened? What is the scale factor that we multiplied the numerator by? One to two is multiplied by two. Because these two quantities are in inverse proportion, We'll multiply the days by the reciprocal of two, which is half. So if I multiply six by half, I'll get three. And your final answer is three days. Now this looks much more logical, correct? Because if I double the number of workforce as in one person to two people, the time taken to complete the job should be half because each one of them would do half the work. And hence they would complete the painting of the entire house in half the days. Right? Instead of six days, it would take three days. This is much more logical. Likewise, if I look at this example, okay, if you look at the speed from the red car to the blue car, the speed has doubled, right? From 10 miles per hour to 20 miles per hour, speed has doubled. So the time taken by the blue car would be half, right? At every uh, instance for each distance, you will realize that the time taken by the blue car is half the time taken by the red car because the speed of the blue car is double. If the speed doubles, time taken to cover the same distance halves. Okay, for example, the distance that is covered by the red car in two hours, the blue car covers in one hour, half. Distance covered by the red car in four hours, the blue car covers it in two hours, half again. Okay, so likewise, six hours and three hours, half. Eight hours by red car, four hours by blue car, half, right? So these two quantities are hence in inverse proportion. Now, find the missing numbers if the quantities A and B are in inverse proportion, right? You need to find the values which are missing from the table. You may choose to pause the video at this moment and have a go at this. Remember, you use the principle of the same thing. If one quantity is multiplied by a number, the other has to be multiplied by its reciprocal. All the best. Well, I hope you managed to work out all the values. Let's see whether you worked it out correctly. So I will start with the second column. The reason being that's the only column where I know the values of both A and B. In no other column, I know values of a and B both. I either know A or B, correct? So from the second column, let me go to the first column. What happens to A? The value of A has become one fourth, right? Because from four to one, I have to multiply by one quarter, one fourth. So B, because it is an inverse proportion, will be multiplied by four, right? So 25 times four is 100. So we got the value of B for the first column. Okay, now from here, I can go to literally any other column, right? So let's compare the first and the third columns now. What has happened to the value of A? Value of A has become five times. From one, it has become five, so multiplied by five. Because these are in inverse proportion, B will be multiplied by one fifth. So 100 times one fifth is 20. Right. Now let's compare the third and the fourth columns. What has happened to the value of B? From 20, it has become 10. So I multiplied B by half. So A will be multiplied by two, reciprocal, remember? So five would become 10. Five times two is 10. Okay, now let's compare the fourth and the fifth columns. Once again, value of B has become half. From 10 to five is half. So value of A will be double, multiplied by two. And hence, the value of A in that column would be 20. 10 times two is 20. And finally, let us compare the fourth and the sixth column, the last column. If I look at the value of A, it has gone from 10 to 50. So it has been multiplied by five. So B, because it's an inverse proportion, will be multiplied by one fifth, correct? 10 times one fifth is two. There you go. We got all the values. Hopefully you've got all of them correct. Now, there's an interesting relationship between A and B if they are in inverse proportion. Let's explore there. 
what is the product of A and B, as in A multiplied by B? If you look at each column carefully, A multiplied by B is 100 each time. For example, 1 times 100 is 100, 4 times 25 is 100, 5 times 20 is also 100, so is 10 times 10, 20 times 5, and five times two, uh, 50 times 2. All of them are 100. Isn't that interesting? So if two quantities are in inverse proportion, their product, which is multiplication, will always be the same. Right? We'll use this property in some examples that we saw uh, later on. Here's the first one. It takes one person, one R, to put a certain number of letters into envelopes. How long will it take five people to complete the same task if they are all working with the same efficiency? Efficiency means at the same rate. Okay, so more people should take less time. That's common sense, okay? So because one person, now there are five people. Earlier there were one person, now there are five people. So more people, it should be less time. That clearly means it's inverse proportion, right? Number of people and the time taken are in inverse proportion. So let's tabulate the data. People at time, one person, it took one hour, which is 60 minutes. So now what happens if the number of people becomes five? So what has happened to number of people? It has been multiplied by five. One times five is five. Because we established that people and time are in inverse proportion, the time would be multiplied by one fifth or divided by five, whichever ways you look at it. So 60 divided by five is 12 minutes. And that's your answer. Five people would take 12 minutes to complete the same task. Let's do the next example. A woman working eight hours a day can complete a job in nine days. How many hours a day would she need to complete, uh, would she need to work to complete the job in six days? So if she works for eight hours a day, she completes it in nine days. How many days would she need to work, uh, how many hours per day in order to complete the job in nine days? Okay, in six days. So, so clearly, because she has to complete it faster, okay, from nine days to six days, she has to work for more hours per day, right? Because she has to do it in less number of days. She has to obviously put in more hours each day, right? So it is again inverse proportion because if the number of hours per day increases, the total time to complete the task would decrease, right? One quantity increases, the other decreases. So that's inverse proportion. So let's tabulate again. Let's try and find out uh, the missing value. So hours per day and days. If she works for eight hours a day, it would take her nine days to complete the job. How many hours per day should she put in to complete the task in six days? Now, how do you go from nine to six? Now that's a little tricky, right? It's not easily found out, okay, nine. What should I multiply or divide by to get six? Well, tricky. So what we'll do is, okay, we'll do something interesting. Instead of going from nine to six, we'll go from nine to three. Ah, you want to wonder, okay, why are we doing this? Because that's not the question. Well, wait, because it's easier to go from nine to three and then from three to six. That's why we just take an intermediate step, okay? So nine to three, which means if she had to complete the task in three days, instead of six days, three days, what would it take? Okay, how many hours per day would she need to work? So from nine to three, I need to multiply by one third, right? Nine divided by three is three. So nine times one third is three. So hours per day, because it is an inverse proportion, will have to be multiplied by three. So eight times three is 24 hours per day. Now that's not practical <laughs> because she has to work for literally uh, the entire day, right? But that's if she intended to finish the task in three days, okay? But the question is not that. She doesn't have to finish the task in three days. We just calculated it, okay? Just for the sake of it, that had she wanted to finish it in three days, she would have to work 24 hours a day. But the question is, if she wants to finish it in six days, how many hours a day should she work? So from three to six is easy, right? If I go from three to six, 
I need to multiply by two. So the hours per day will have to be multiplied by half. The reciprocal of two is half, right? So 24 times half is 12 hours. And that's your final answer, 12 hours per day. So you need to work for 12 hours per day in order to complete the task in six days. Now, this looked a little complicated, right? To so go from nine to three and then from three to six, okay? If you didn't want to do that, then let's use the simple thumb rule of the product, the product rule, okay? What does the product rule say? That if two quantities are in inverse proportion, then their product, which is multiplication, should be the same, right? So we have established that these two quantities are in inverse proportion. What will be their product? So in the first row, eight times nine is 72, correct? Since the product has to be the same, even the product of the second row should be the same. So something times six is 72. So what do you need to multiply six by to arrive at 72? Well, 12 times six is 72. So it should be 12 hours, right? So she should work for 12 hours a day. Isn't that easy? This made the question on inverse proportion so very easy, okay? All I needed to do was make sure that the product remains the same in each case, right? Let's do the next one. At three pound a piece, you can buy 28 candies in the amount of money you have. If the price of the candy increases to seven pounds a piece, how many candies can you now buy in the same amount? Now, clearly, the amount that you have is fixed. So if the price of candies go up, clearly, you will be not be able to buy as many, right? You will be able to buy a few of them. So if the price increases, you'll be able to buy less number of candies. So clearly, this is again inverse proportion, right? Inverse proportion. The data has been tabulated as given, okay? Price per candy is three. Candies is number of 20 candies you can buy is 28. If the price per candy goes up to seven, how many can you buy? Because it is inverse proportion, we need to first establish what do you multiply to go from three to seven? Once again, very tricky. Three to seven, what do I multiply? Can't think of a number. So forget about the multiplication. Think about the product rule, okay? So you know that the product of price per candy and candy should be the same because they are in inverse proportion. So let's find the product. What's three times 28? Three times 28 is 84. So the product of price per candy and number of candies has to be 84. That should remain the same in the second row as well. So seven, what should I multiply by to get 84? Seven times what is 84? Seven times 12 is 84. And hence the final answer is 12 candies, okay? If the price of the candies increases to seven pound a piece, then she'll be able to buy only 12 candies in the amount she has. Well, let's go to the last question. This looks like a tricky one. On a highway, the fuel consumption rate of your vehicle is five liters per mile. Fuel consumption rate is basically uh, how much amount of fuel is consumed for the distance you cover. So for every distance you cover, certain amount of fuel is emptied from your fuel tank. Now fuel tank has a fixed capacity, right? So, okay, so in certain amount of fuel, okay, you'll be able to go a certain distance. So it says on a highway, because it is smooth, the fuel consumption is five liters per mile. And in that, you will be able to travel 18 miles on a full tank of diesel, right? So if you have full tank of diesel, on a highway, you can go 18 miles. But in the countryside, okay, because the roads are not as smooth in the countryside, the fuel consumption rate increases to six liters per mile, okay? So more fuel is consumed while you're traveling in a countryside in a highway because the roads are smooth, less fuel is consumed for every mile or the distance that you cover. In the countryside, more fuel is consumed, correct? How far can you travel on a tank full of diesel in the countryside? So clearly, if the consumption increases because your tank has a limited capacity, it's fixed. If more fuel is consumed, you'll be able to travel less distance in the amount of fuel that you have, correct? So if the fuel consumption increases, the distance covered 
decreases. So clearly, once again, the quantities are in inverse proportion, right? No rocket science here. The values are given in the tabulated form, five liters per mile. If the fuel consumption is five liters per mile, the distance is 18 miles. What's the distance if the fuel consumption was to be six liters per mile? So how do you go from five liters to six liters? Can't say because that's again a fraction which is not easily convertible. So let's use the product rule once again. The product of fuel consumption and distance has to be the same. So what is five times 18? Five multiplied by 18 is 90. That product has to remain the same for the second row as well, so 90. So what do you multiply six by to reach 90? Six times 15 is 90. And hence, it suggests that in a countryside, you'll be able to travel only 15 miles for a full tank. On the highway, you are able to cover 18 miles for a full tank. Or on the countryside, you'll be able to cover only 15 miles for a full tank. Clearly, the distance covered reduces because more fuel is consumed on the countryside as against when you travel on a highway. Right? But this is an interesting method to solve questions on inverse proportion, wherein you make the products equal. Right? That's the end of the lesson on inverse proportion. I hope you understood the three things that we learned. We first learned, okay, what is inverse proportion? Okay, when the quantities are in inverse proportion, how are they related to each other? Then we understood the reciprocal method of finding the unknown quantity. Okay, so if one of the numbers is multiplied by something, the other one has to be multiplied by its reciprocal. So that's how we found the unknown quantity. Then where we were not able to find out the correct product, we found out that the multiplication property or the product property worked well when we said that if two quantities are in inverse proportion, then their product should always be the same or constant, right? I hope you enjoyed this lesson. Thank you.